Well, it's a law. I'm not saying it's an unlawful arrest. No, I'm saying that seasoned investigators usually wait to make such arrests. Now, if you thought the guy was a danger to the public or, you know, he was some mass murderer that you couldn't let on the streets, okay, I understand that. But that's not the case here. They knew who he was. They know who he is. They know he's not going anywhere, and they know he'd come back. Uh, so to make the arrest like that by auction was way premature. As I said, the federal agency investigating this is telling us they're not done with their investigation. But OPD is in 12 hours? Just on its face, it's ridiculous. And today, the DA thought so and thought, hey, we should probably get all the facts before we do rush into something here. And I respect that decision. Can Daniel talk about how hard this has been on the family? As I told you earlier, and you made a point of this, and I'm going to respect that, that you wanted to read a statement and not answer questions. So we're going to continue with that, okay? okay I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm, sorry, I'm about to go on air for Univision Network. Okay. Is it possible that he could at least read the statement in Spanish for me while I'm doing this live in two minutes? I'm sorry, Juan, but I just... Okay, well, maybe when we're done, yeah, sure. Okay. We'll try to accommodate you. That's for me. I'm busy. Steve Gregory, KFI. So are your investigators done? I mean, no. No. What more do your investigators have to do? Well, we'd like to get, we have to get access to uh, the vehicle, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Sanchez Ramirez's vehicle, or the, I guess the Growers Inc.'s vehicle. Uh, we'd like, there's a couple of eyewitnesses that we have identified that we'd like to interview. Uh, we also have some uh, videotape footage that we'd like to see. Is the NTSB going to allow you to see the forward facing camera footage? Uh, not at this time, I don't think. However, our investigation is independent of theirs. It's not like it's some joint investigation. And by no means am I saying that we're working with them. We're conducting our own investigation separate and independent from that. Now, I am more than willing to share what we have found with them. And when they make such a request, we will do so. Uh, but they have made that request. How sure are you that uh, what's seen on those forward-facing cameras will corroborate the claims that Mr. Sanchez Ramirez made? I, ergo, the flashing of the lights, all that other stuff. Well, I don't know when that, that picks up. So I know that Mr. Sanchez Ramirez saw the train from very far away. He thinks, you know, about three to 400 yards, okay? But I don't know what their camera is going to show. I know I have a great deal of confidence in what Mr. Sanchez Ramirez is saying, and I, I have that because... He gave me the version of events before I knew any of the physical evidence, and the physical evidence has now corroborated them. So, and now the NTSB has adopted the version of events that he told me about. So, I'm very confident that he's telling the truth about everything. When will your what client be able to? Okay. When will your client have a one-on-one -on -one with the NTSB? Uh, we have told him that he'll be released, and then I told Mr. Bragg that we'll arrange for a meeting when the time comes. When will he be released? Do you think around about? Well, the jail is not a service industry, uh, and the timing of that will probably be a while. Uh, it usually takes four to eight hours. But today? Or after midnight? I don't know. It's going to be close. I mean, it takes a while. I mean, I've, uh, you know, I won't comment on that, but I've had this experience numerous times, and I've had guys released. It usually takes at least four hours, sometimes a lot longer. The evidence would be the one, the physical evidence the NTSB told us about. Uh, additionally, we've uh, we've discovered some witnesses that we've discussed that we've talked to. Yeah, what did they? What evidence did they speak to? What All I'll say at this point is that we have confirmed that Mr. Sanchez Ramirez's version of events have been corroborated. something about the car, maybe? We know that the, we know how the, the the events I just talked about, how he turned on the tracks and why he turned on the tracks. That's all been corroborated. The NTSB has the same exact theory. The, the fact that the car got eventually stuck, that it drove down, he couldn't back up off the tracks. The NTSB thinks the same, according to their investigator. Uh, he sat down, was very nice, went through the map, went through some of the evidence with us. It was, uh, I was very impressed with how open they were with everything. Uh, so uh, I have nothing but good things to say about them. How's Mr. Sanchez Ramirez doing? His health, how did he take the news? Well, we've had some issues because he's on some uh, medication and things of that nature, and he's not getting it as consistently as his doctor requires. Uh, hopefully, you know, he'll get out now, um, get his bearings, and he'll be with his family, which I know will be a huge help to his spirits. Will, will his release be conditioned to anything? It's not, but we've made an agreement, and we'll keep our agreement to May 4th to return. But he doesn't have to stay here, and he can go back home to you No, understand that. Once you're released right now, he's as free as any of you guys are. Well, as far as I know what that is. Uh, he's free as any, he can do whatever he wants. We've made an agreement uh, that we will honor to return on May 4th. Uh, the reason we make that agreement is twofold. One is that he's a man of his word, uh, and we're willing to do that. Two, you know, the practical reasons, you don't want people knocking down your door to arrest you either, if that's what they decide to do. Will he be going back to work? 
Um, you know, we haven't even broached that. I haven't gotten that far. I mean, you're out of jail. We don't really discuss work. Uh, we didn't ask Mrs. Lincoln how the play was either. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else I could do for you guys? At uh, uh, what time were you informed by the district attorney uh, that this, he will follow this step in, uh, in, in one month? Okay, well, I found out that they weren't filing charges about 1220. We were calling all day and I exchanged a dozen phone calls, I don't know, uh, trying to figure out what they were going to do. Uh, the, uh, I talked to the DA before court uh, today. <laughs> Uh, he, we, I understand what the concerns are and what the particulars are. I said, okay, let's come up with a date in the future where we can come back to see if this gets sorted out. I don't want my guy arrested. Uh, and he agreed, and we agreed on May 4th, and that's how we came to that agreement. It's that basic. And I, Mr. Henderson and I know each other for a long period of time. We're very confident in each other's words. Did he tell you what the concerns were? I know what the concerns are. Did he tell us? The, the, the health and welfare of the engineer. Elaborate on that. Well, the law would say that if you commit a negligent act that would be defined as a misdemeanor like traffic violation and somebody dies as a result of that act, that you would be, you'd be guilty of misdemeanor vehicular manslaughter. Okay, So uh, until the health of the engineer is determined and his status is hopefully uh, for the better, but God forbid it's for the worse, then the DA would have a criminal charge that they could file. I can't speak to what the district attorney is thinking. I can I can speak to what we what what I understand. I'll put it, I'll put it that way. So he's essentially waiting for a potential enhancement based on the condition of the engineer. Well, you say enhancement, like no, because actually the misdemeanor would be a less of a charge than the felony. I see. The misdemeanor being on the tracks. That well, he committed a traffic infra infraction. It's the traffic infraction to drive on railroad tracks, in the manner it was. And it's considered a negligent act, so no criminal intent is required. Okay. The fact that injuries resulted would not be a felony. Depends on what they wanted to, what the charge was. So that's a complicated question, depending on what the charge is. Uh, in theory, if they thought there was a hit and run, yes.